Niagara, a tourist destination, home to many family-friendly G-rated attractions. But when the sun goes down and the neon lights come on, Niagara engages in adult activity. Niagara's nightlife is a booming business, however it is run mostly by unjust and hurtful folk who enslave and deceive the innocent into participating and performing in explicit acts, this being the criminal act of human trafficking. Human trafficking, uh, I guess loosely explained, is where uh, one person uh, exploits another person, be it uh, physically, mentally, for financial gain in most cases, in a nutshell. Usually it's a form of imprisonment. You're taken um, beyond your will or without real understanding as to why uh, you're put into that field of, of work. Many times it is children underneath the age of 18 and they are forced into doing sexual favors. They are um, told that they will be beaten if they try and leave. Their families will be killed or hurt if they try to leave and so therefore they feel stuck. Human trafficking is the second largest international crime industry, only following closely behind drug trafficking. Globally, the human trafficking industry creates over $32 billion in revenue, exploiting over 30 million people. With over 300,000 new recruits under the age of 18 in America each year. We see it through, uh, through the prostitution, through the escort trade in Niagara. It definitely is right around strip clubs, uh, low-income motels, um, uh, yeah, primarily in the strip club area. So right on Lundy's Lane is where a lot of um, youth exploitation certainly is happening. And exploitation, human trafficking in general, does happen in the Niagara region. Human trafficking is unfortunately alive in lots of different ways here in Niagara. There are strip clubs that are down on Lundy's Lane um, in, in different places in Niagara as well. And some of those women work there um, because they want to, because they're paid properly, and then some of them do not, and they come across the border from the U.S. Well, what will happen is uh, you end up with one person that tends to be uh, connected. You usually have your, your pimp that, that is running, you know, the, uh, the crew, uh, you, you know, the girls, and uh, that pimp will use one of his girls to get into uh, like a house party or something like that to, to meet other people. You know, it's a, it's a business, right? So what they really do is networking. Hey, they look for those who are vulnerable. They look for those who are hanging out at malls and actually they frequent around schools and colleges and many times um, it's known as the boyfriend and they actually groom these, these girls and sometimes it's years of just grooming and um, like buying, buying them jewelry and clothes and taking care of them and then later on down the road that's when they start saying now you owe me and then that's when the threats and the coercion begins. They convince you that if as long as you have them you're safe and that they love you and you're perfect as long as you listen. A lot of times it's grooming process. So it's not a matter of, oh, hey, you want to come and work today? It's more of a grooming pro process of trust. So they're building up a trust where it could be a boyfriend, it could be a family member, it could be a friend of a friend. And it's a, a grooming process of building trust with that individual. And then eventually, um, because of that trust, they say, this is what we need to do. I need you to do this for me just once or whatever. And next, you know, the person's totally entrenched within sex trade. They also sometimes get manipulated into thinking that they are in love with their pimp and they start to believe that and then they um, lose their life because of that. We were treated like dogs on a short leash. To this day, I don't go out after dark because of all the threats. I have also received threats against my mother in Hungary. I was ashamed to go back. I was afraid of what people would say about me people would look at me. Money is a big thing. Uh, these girls can make a, a lot of money in a really short period of time. And the other uh, issue that kind of comes with that lifestyle is uh, substance abuse, alcohol or drugs. 
A lot of it is people think they're getting a lot of money, but they, they don't get to keep the money. Uh, they get little small portions, and a huge part of the sex trade is addiction. They can get them addicted, they've got them, because they'll keep working for the sake of the drug. One day I just, I had spent a day with a few people, and something clicked, and I said I was tired, and I wanted to go home. They just, you get tired. You get tired of that vicious circle, you get tired of the same routine, you get tired of being exploited, um, and you just, you get tired, so you just come to a point that you know you need to get out. It's a really um, difficult process, I, as I've seen, to renegotiate the world again. Um, lots of these women that I know, or a few of these women that I know, have children, and so trying to get their children back into their care and to become a mother. Um, is a huge stumbling block. Within, within the time that I was working with girls and stuff in Niagara Falls, it was increasingly getting worse. Um, they'd come up with some better schemes of uh, drawing um, like the high school student girls in. Uh, there's lots of private parties that are held in Niagara area where someone will run a pimple, run a group of girls who provide services in hotel rooms that provide services to large groups, baseball teams, um, you know, different groups that come in, uh, particular over the border, a lot of the Americans come over because in the strip joints were fully undressed. So they, they come into Canada because they know that when they go to strip joints, the girls will be completely naked. Or in the States, that's, that's not allowed. It's a lot more controlled now with, with the industry, like the communities that are out there, the programs, but it's just always going to be there. What can we as a society do to stop the cause? I think um, along the lines, I think it's education to be aware of and to be educated. Uh, know the signs of exploitation. Know the dangers of exploitation. Um, when someone is vulnerable, they are at greater risk of being exploited. You know, changes in lifestyle, um, changes in schedule and pattern, maybe not necessarily, you know, talking to friends and family, isolating themselves. Uh, you know, in, in the teen age group, you know, it becomes, uh, you know, a student that all of a sudden seems to have, uh, you know, a lot of fancy new clothes or, you know, a lot of 20-something year old friends that uh, are always loitering around the school and not necessarily just waiting for, uh, for the student, but maybe they're talking to the other students and telling them about how much money they can make and talking about modeling contracts and, uh, and things like that. A big piece is to not participate in the industry, which means not going to strip clubs, not, um, not you know, buying prostitutes, not any of that kind of thing. So staying away from the industry. Stop looking down on them like they're not people because they are. And just remember that they're fighting a battle. They're not bad people, they're just making bad choices and there's so much, there's so many things out there you can get involved in helping with that can save someone's life because I know it saved mine. And, uh, you know what I would say to those individuals, there are, you got to go to the police, they can help you get out. Um, you know, what you've been told is a lie. I would just want them to know that they're loved, that they're valued, that they're precious not only to God, but to me and, and others who are out there, you know, wanting to help and willing to help them. There's outs for them, right? That uh, they don't have to be there if they don't want to. And that there are people in policing that are willing to help them. And that there are people in the community that are willing to help them. And that there's no shame in asking for help. And I, I, I would just, I'd want them to know that that there is hope for a better future and to not give up. But there's hope that every day you wake up, there's hope because you're awake. And one day you will get out and you're stronger than anything out there. And God has hope for you.